Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about being bitter. This is a topic that might be sensitive for a lot of you out there, but if you have been in a relationship with someone who's perhaps narcissistic or emotionally abusive, or you just went through a really nasty divorce or breakup, it is actually a normal part of the grieving process to feel some kind of like resentment or bitterness towards that person for maybe kind of altering the course of your life. And so in this video, I wanna talk about bitterness and I wanna give you some tips to kind of like change your mindset on it and help you through it. So you know me, let's start with the basics. Like right off the bat, it is normal to feel bitter. It is normal to feel resentment. It is normal to feel anger. So all of these things are normal human emotions that you're going to feel and you're going to need to express when you are going through something difficult, especially when the relationship and the way that the relationship ends was really not okay, meaning there was cheating, there was lying, there was some kind of betrayal, someone just discards you and jumps into another relationship. Now let's keep adding, adding layers to that. Let's say that you were married for 20 years. Let's say you were married for five years. Let's say that you took vows. Let's say that this person promised that they were never going to be the person that they ended up being. Maybe we have children together. Maybe we have shared a life together. Maybe we just started building a life together. So there's a lot of acceptance that has to be done. That's why resentment and bitterness sometimes will show up is because it really takes time for you to actually move through this process of accepting really where you are now in life and in this relationship and having to really look at this person and grieve and mourn who that person was and having to accept that. All of these things are not things that you can just easily do and they're messy. And since they're messy, you're going to experience these normal emotions of feeling angry and ticked off and mad and bitter and frustrated. When something was yours, and or you thought it was yours and you thought you had this relationship and this life and this dream and this family and this dynamic with your children and now all of a sudden it's changing and on some levels you feel like you were robbed or something was stolen from you because this is the way it was and now that's not the case and when we feel robbed or when we feel like something was stolen from, from us, it is because we did not make this decision. We did not choose for this to happen to us. And when something happens that's out of our control, it makes us feel out of control. And these are where kind of like all of those feelings will start to come up when we are going through grief. That's why it ebbs and flows and it's an emotional roller coaster ride. And one day I feel fine and then the next day I'm angry and the next day I feel like I'm going to get through this. and. The next day I can't get out of bed and then I can coexist with you and possibly even co-parent if that's something that you're having to do. And then some days I can't even look at you in the face. Like, so it's going to be this natural course of events and feelings that you're going to go through. And I think where a lot of the bitterness and resentment really comes into play is the fact that you didn't choose this. You didn't want to go through this experience and you can become very angry and resentful towards the other person for quote, putting you in this in this position. Now, while you know me, I'm always gonna give validation because it's, it's validating that you feel this way. It's validating that you're ticked off. It's validating that you're bitter at times because someone cheated on you and left you. You're angry that your life is changing and this wasn't something that you planned on. Here's the thing though. We don't wanna stay in this place. There are plenty of things that happen to us in life that we don't ask for. And unfortunately, that's called life. And we have to kind of accept that these things are happening. We have to learn how to navigate through them. When you learn how to navigate through them and you accept something, now accepting something doesn't mean that every single day you're going to be okay with it. Or quite frankly, accepting something doesn't mean you're ever going to be okay with it. There are certain things that you may never fully like but you accept that this is the way it is though. And so when you can start to kind of like change your mindset a little bit, you actually really start to gain more of your power back. And when you gain your power back, then you can actually consciously decide on what you want to do and where you want to go and how you want to take care of yourself. The reason why that's so important is because that's actually healthy. That's you not letting a situation or a person control you. So you can have two kind of frames of mind. You can have the frame of mind that says, well, if I accept this, then this means that this person got away with something or that this person doesn't have to like pay 
the, or have to deal with the consequences or pay for their actions. You know, the truth is, is that most people don't care that they hurt you. Most people don't care that they did something wrong. Most people don't care that they're not healthy and they don't want to work on themselves. And so if that is the case and that's the situation that you're dealing with and that's causing you a lot of resentment and bitterness because maybe, you know, on one hand, you feel like your life was stolen. On one hand, everything's changing and you didn't ask for this change. And then on the other hand, this person just kind of dips and moves on with their life very quickly. And you're here kind of like picking up the pieces. Again, all of that is validated. A hundred percent, that is not easy to go through. A hundred percent, it is not fair that you have to deal with this. Here's the thing though. If you actually learn lessons from this experience, whether that's lessons within yourself or lessons regarding people, educate yourself, learn and grow within, then even though it's probably not something that you would ever want to go through, but then you can actually take the lessons and have the things that you really want. And we'll get into that later on in the video. But accepting is about taking your power back. One of the reasons why I even started this channel, one of the reasons why I coach is because obviously I've been in your shoes. So I have been the person that has experienced someone leaving them. I have been the person that all of a sudden one day my life completely changed and I had to rebuild every aspect of my life, pretty much almost every single aspect of my life. And that's not an easy thing to go through. Believe me, I know. So when I validate you, I validate you not just from giving you validation, but I validate you from experience. And the reason why I made this channel and the reason why I started my coaching practice was because I saw in my own personal life as well as just, you know, even just in the public or just, just knowing of people that things would happen to them that were out of their control and they became bitter and they stayed bitter and they stayed angry and they stayed resentful. And I wanted to help those kind of people to understand what was really going on because while I 100% have experienced everything that you're feeling and have felt that it myself, I have felt angry, I have felt bitter, I have felt resentful, but being able to like learn and be healthy and rise above it and move on and rebuild and be happier, that takes work. And so that's what I really wanted to help people with because I realized that more specifically, these women, that I knew in my own personal life, they let this person control them. They let this person really have an influence over the course of the rest of their life. And while it sucks that someone leaves you and it sucks that someone has an inability to, to love and to love you, and maybe they choose to quote, love another person, or they hurt your kids and you have to witness that, again, not easy stuff to go through, but if you can learn how to actually rise above that and rebuild and become stronger because of this experience, like that's what this experience was actually meant to do. It wasn't meant to tear you down. And so learning how to do that and what it actually means for me was so important to learn not only just for myself, but and then to be able to help other people with it as well. Now, it is very easy to fall down a rabbit hole. It is very easy and we have all been there where we kind of sit and we're sitting in such uncomfortableness, pain, sorrow, sadness, frustration, and this question just keeps replaying over and over again. Why did this happen to me? These are like the constant things that we're saying in our mind, which causes us to kind of live in a victim state. Now, it is normal to ask yourself those questions. It is normal for you to kind of ask them and feel like crap for a minute. Let's just like be honest. Like there's going to be that part of you that just will say, why is this happening to me? Because you're experiencing a lot of pain and you can't always be so healthy and rise above everything that you're feeling because feelings are not logical, they're feelings. And if you're coming from a really unhealthy place yourself, they're going to come where you haven't really like dove into like your past and really healed from a lot of that stuff then a lot of those questions are going to come up because your self-esteem has been dwindled. You don't have a high sense of self. You don't have a high sense of self-worth. But even if you do and you're a super confident person, you can't be super strong and super woman or super man all the time. You're going to feel normal human things. Now, when you ask yourself, why is this happening to me? That is a very emotional question that you ask. It's coming from insecurity, it's coming from sadness, it's coming from all of those kind of like emotions that are like all bottled up and put on the shelf over here. So 
And when you ask that, you have to be able to, and this is where self-parenting comes into play. This is where learning how to be your own coach and therapist comes into play. Yes, we can talk to our friends and our family about all of these things, but they're emotionally invested in our, in our lives and in ourselves and in our relationships because they love us. And so they won't be able to always help us in healthy ways, right? They'll just say things like, well, you were too good for that person. Well, you'll get better. You And all of those things are great to hear, but you're trying to really answer a question like, why is this happening to me? So in order to kind of like overcome that question and like move on from it, because that question will keep you staying in that victim state, I want you to just take a step back and really ask yourself, why is this happening to you? Why do you think this is happening to you right now? Because what you want to try to do is be able to see what really is the lesson in this. Now, it's hard to be able to sit in a lot of pain and articulate this lesson because sometimes we just have to go through the process, get on the other side and look back and be like, oh, that's why I did that. That's why I had to go through that. That's why, this is what I gained from that experience. And you, you can't always know that when you're right at the starting line and sitting in the pain. But you can still ask the question and start coming up with some answers. Some answers are going to come up that are going to help you kind of like soothe yourself while you're going through this experience. Because when you can't really see why something is happening, even though it's painful, when you can't get past the emotion of the pain to really be honest with yourself and truthful and see what is this trying to teach me, you're never going to actually learn the lesson. And then the worst thing, and this is what happens a lot of the times, because most people don't ask that question, why is this happening to me? And they're coming from like a really logical outside perspective where they're being honest and truthful with themselves. Like, why am I experiencing this right now? Like, why do I need to go through this? And Again, some things you're not going to fully be able to understand until you get on the other side, but you still will be able to answer this question. Was it that you lacked boundaries? Was it that you lacked standards? Now, if you can't really ask yourself this question and start to come up with like, okay, this is, I think these are the lessons I'm supposed to be learning right now, then you're always going to let this person and this experience control you, and then it will alter the course of your life. It will alter the way you feel about yourself, and of course that in turn will alter your future. Now, most people, that's what happens. They don't really want to learn the lesson. They would rather just stay in that this happened to me because I'm a victim. They don't want to feel self-empowered to take this experience and really go within and really work on some core things about themselves. Now, don't get me wrong, heartbreak sucks. It is probably one of the worst pains that you can go through other than a death of someone. But on some levels, especially when you're in a narcissistically abusive relationship, you are experiencing a death. You are experiencing the death of someone that you thought you knew. And now you're witnessing someone completely different. And it's a mind trip and it's not an easy thing to go through. There is nothing worse than someone that you really loved and trusted betraying you, especially when you never thought in a million years this person could do what they did and not only did what they did in the relationship but then the way that they treated you after the divorce after the breakup and maybe on some levels you still have to deal with them because perhaps you own businesses together or you know investments together or you have children together and you still have to work with them on some level or see them the way that that person's going to treat you then really can magnify just your anger and your hatred and the bitterness and resentment that you have towards them. And this is where it's extremely difficult to deal with these types of personalities if you have to have a business together, co-parent together, et cetera, because you're constantly hearing and seeing this person. But on some levels, it's also constant reinforcement of you having to work on you and control you and soothe you. So you can look at that experience as being really crappy and something that's extremely difficult to go through, which it is, or you can look at this experience as, okay, this person is constantly teaching me these lessons by trying to throw something in my face or be difficult. And so I'm learning how to, and practicing how to constantly rise above it. And of course you're not human, so to rise above it every single time is not realistic, but it will be constant, someone hitting you constantly where you have to learn how to kind of like move and you know 
avoid those punches and really learn how to parent yourself. A lot of what I teach and what I talk about every single day are things that I had to learn how to do for myself based on the experiences and the people that I had to deal with. What I want to help you to really understand is that there's actually a purpose to what you're going through and not look at the situation as why is this happening to me and taking it in such a negative way you might do that at some days you know if you're co-parenting or if you're a single mom like i was the days where i was all alone and i was parenting by myself and my son was a little baby and i didn't have someone to make the bottle for me or he was sick and i had to do that alone and i'm tired and i have laundry and i have no help i am by myself i was angry i was bitter i was upset that i had to do all that work and someone just got to like jump ship and do whatever they wanted to do Again, not easy things to go through. And as much as in the moment, I would just have my meltdowns and do what I needed to do and then wipe the tears and pick myself up and keep going because really that's all you can do. In hindsight now, I see, and I think I knew it then too, it was just, I was in pain, obviously. I was tired and I was exhausted and I was angry as well, but I did see it in the moment as well that my relationship with my son is super close because we had those years together and our relationship is still that way because we have the connection that we have and the relationship that we have. Not saying that I wouldn't have had a great relationship with my son, if I would have stayed married and not been a single mother, but I also would have had more children. And I think that that does change a relationship. When it's just you and one child, it's very different than you with two or three other kids. And I do think that having two parents in the house, not saying that you're not as close with your children if you stay married, no. When you are a single parent and you go through a difficult time with your child and your child sees it too on some level, I don't care. I've been the child, the single mother, and I've been the single mother. It changes It changes the relationship. There is a tighter bond because of the struggles that you went through with that child during those times. So for that, I will forever be grateful. And I'm grateful that I got all the hugs. I got all the kisses. I got to be able to always be there for him, even though it was really, really hard. And I think one of the best feelings is knowing that every time you go through something difficult and you feel like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do this, how am I going to be able to do it? And you do it, then all that does is it just keeps constantly building confidence in yourself that like, oh my God, I actually did that. And it just keeps building this like armor, this strength within you. Now that doesn't mean that we don't ask for help and we're not vulnerable or any of those things, but it does constantly prove to you that I'm actually a badass and I can actually do this. So I want you to be able to acknowledge your pain, but I don't want you to live in your pain. And most people live in their pain and then that becomes the addiction and it actually feels good to live in that space. Now here is the last thing that is probably the game changer for you. When you are feeling resent or bitterness, one of the things that will help you 100% is when you take your power back. Now, what do I mean by that? Because we hear that all the time. Taking your power back means that you're not going to let this control you. Taking your power back means that you're also not going to live in the fantasy of what you wanted to happen or the relationship that you thought you had. Now, that's a tough pill to swallow because if you're bitter, then that means that in your mind, you think that what you had was absolutely so amazing. That means that you are living in a fantasy of what it is that you had and you're mourning something that doesn't actually exist. Now, grieving and bitter are two different things. So can you grieve that you didn't have the relationship that you thought you had? Yes. Can you grieve that the, your your life is changing? Absolutely. Can you grieve that your future is going to look different even though it could turn out absolutely amazing or if you choose, it can turn out to be not the greatest at all, but it's going to change the course of your life? Yes, absolutely. So taking your power back means that you understand these things, that you see and accept the truth versus the fantasy and the projection. When you really start working on that, you don't, you ain't, you ain't bitter anymore. <laughs> you can see that what I had, and again, you have to mourn and grieve that and deal with the pain of that, but you can see that what I had actually wasn't even what I wanted. 
and I wasn't even happy. Because here's the thing, even if you thought you were happy in the course of that relationship, if you're honest with yourself, and that's where most people struggle is they don't want to sit in the honesty and face the truth, that you didn't have everything that you wanted. And so now you actually have a chance to rebuild and get the things that you truly want if you work on yourself to actually go out there and make it happen for yourself. So I hope that this has helped you. I really hope it gave you some comfort. I hope it inspired you and motivated you to kind of really work on those parts of yourself that you know you still feel bitter about, you still feel resentful for. So don't be afraid to definitely ask for help and invest in yourself during this time. Like watch the videos, read the books, like, you know, take the courses, all of those things to really help yourself through this pain and navigate where you are in your life right now so you can rebuild. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I'll see you next week.